guys, welcome back to another week. My name's Grace and we have been talking all this month about shout out, being thankful for everything that we have. But are we always thankful? Is it easy to be thankful? Do we have space in our life to be thankful? <gasps> That's a tricky question, isn't it? Have a watch of this science experiment and I will be back in just a, a few minutes to chat to you. So I've got a cup of water here and my cup of water is green. And it's green just so you can see what um, I'm going to do with it. And you can see that it's full all the way from the bottom right to the top. And if I poured any more water in there, what would happen? That's right, it would overflow. And if I put something in there, something heavy, what would happen? That's right, all the water would pour out and it would overflow. And we've been talking about thankfulness this week. And sometimes we might feel like we don't have any room in our lives. Our lives are full like this cup and we don't have any room for thankfulness. We're too busy to say thank you to someone. We don't have time to stop and say thank you when someone holds the door open for us. But these little cotton wool balls, these are going to show thankfulness in our life. And even though our lives are very full and busy, look what happens with thankfulness. Do you think that water's going to fall over the top? Oh, one goes in. How many do you think we can get in before that water overflows? Can you see them all falling down? Do you think that water's going to fall over the top? Look how much thankfulness I have in my life. When I stop to say, Thank you for playing with me. Thank you for holding the door open for me. Thank you for helping me with my homework. Thank you, Mummy, for making dinner for me. Thank you for loving me, God. Thank you, Church, for all you do for me. Look what's happening. Our lives can be full of thankfulness without that water spilling over the top. We can say thank you for things, thank you to so many people and still have room for more and more and more. There is always room in our lives, no matter how busy we are, for thankfulness. Look at that. Our cup is still full but we still have room for more and more thankfulness. How amazing is that? God gives us room in our lives always for thankfulness. We are going to watch our video now and uh, we will be back in just a second. With my Megaphone 3000, I can take shout outs to a whole new level! <gasps> hey! Person on the side of the street! Thanks for picking up that piece of candy wrapper! Ooh! Person in the purple shirt and those green shoes! You are awesome! Thanks! Hey! Birds! Thanks for those positive tweets! <gasps> yep! This is probably the best gift I've ever gotten. I will cherish it forever. What? The Megaphone 4000 just came out today with 27 built-in voice modules and Bluetooth capabilities! <gasps> That's way better than this old thing. Thanks a lot, person! 
person who bought me this lame megaphone probably got it on sale. In today's Bible story, we'll hear about some people who weren't happy with what they were given and had a real bad attitude about it. That should be fun, right? Sure. Whatever. See you in a bit. Move along, people! Move along! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. While Jesus taught in many different ways, he often shared the most important truths as stories. He used the things and animals and situations in people's everyday lives to help them understand things that were bigger. One day Jesus explained to his closest friends what the kingdom of heaven was like, and he used a story to help it connect. Now, if he told that story to us today in our world right now, I think it would go a little something like this. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing grape. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? One hundred dollars for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, uh, don't squash the grapes. Oh, well, what happens if we do that? They might whine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me. I'll pay you well. Good deal. Let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest, so the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. <sighs> The first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one like hired us. I'll hire you, come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A grape job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go, $100. Like totally rad, man! At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work? Huh, <laughs> that means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars and nine o'clock in the morning. $100. Huh. Okay, 
By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep, $100. What? Preposterous. The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. You paid those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us, even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Friends, didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away, cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Sometimes I can be ungrateful. It's true. Like with this whole megaphone thing, I think I deserve the best. I'm fun, I'm talented, I'm generous to other people most of the time. I should get the best gifts. It doesn't seem fair that someone else out there will get a better gift than me. No. Oh. You see, I forget to be grateful, but Here's another little secret. Sometimes you can be ungrateful too. Sometimes we forget to focus on what we've been given because we're too focused on what other people have. We're too focused on what we think is fair. Don't believe me? Ask yourself these questions. Am I jealous when someone has more or better stuff than me? Or do I think I deserve better than other people because I am better than other people? Or do I count my presents at Christmas to make sure I have more than anyone else? If you would say yes to any of those questions, you might need a little gratitude adjustment. All you have to do when you're feeling ungrateful is to take a second and look around at all the things you have to be grateful for. So maybe I don't have 27 voice modules and Bluetooth capabilities, but I do have two voice modules. It's important to be grateful. It's easy if you try. I've got the cool siren. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, things aren't always fair, but sometimes that's a good thing. Because guess what? Jesus died for our sins. That wasn't fair. And we didn't do anything to deserve that kind of sacrifice. But Jesus did it anyway to show how much he loved all people. So here's the one thing to remember today. Adjust your attitude. Be grateful for what you've got. Don't worry about the stuff you haven't got. That's a lesson for me too. Oh, sorry, that's, oh, sorry. Sorry, okay, oh. see you next time. <laughs>
isn't there a fun experiment and a really interesting story? In the story, did all the vineyard workers have a good attitude? No, they didn't, did they? They found it really, really tricky to know why some were paid more than others. But this month, we've been talking about thankfulness and being thankful for what we have, not what other people have, but what we have. And that's really tricky sometimes too, isn't it? Maybe when your brother or sister gets a bigger biscuit than you, that's really difficult to be thankful, isn't it? Maybe when a friend chooses another friend to play with instead of you, that's a really tricky time to be thankful. But the Bible tells us to be thankful all the time. And even though that's really tricky, we can ask God to help us. And this month, we've been looking at five different colours, haven't we? And they have helped us to be thankful. So we've looked at blue, the colour blue. And we've been thankful for people who help us. We've looked at the colour yellow. And we're thankful for something that God has done for us. We've looked at the colour red and we've been thankful for something that we love about Jesus. We've looked at the colour green and been thankful for something we've learnt. And we've looked at the colour black and been thankful for something that we can see. Now, like I said before, it's not always easy to be thankful, is it? And we've got some things that say different things here. And there are situations where we might find it hard to be thankful. So let's have a look. Let's look at our first colour first, blue. This work is so hard. <gasps> you might be doing some spellings or some reading or some homework at home and it's so hard. But what did the colour blue remind us? Thank you, God, for people that help us. <gasps> let's have a look. What could we be thankful for when we're finding things so hard? My parent can help me. Someone at home who looks after me could help me. Thank you, God, that my parents can help me. What have we got next? My friends have more than me. That's a tricky colour to see because it's yellow. My friends have more than me. Maybe it's more toys, more snacks, more lunch. My friends have more than me. What could we say? Thank you, God, for all that I have. So instead of looking at what your friends have and being cross that you don't have the same, thank you, God, for what I do have. Thank you for my lovely home and my bedroom and my food and my friends. Thank you, God, for everything I have. <gasps> this is a tricky one, isn't it? I am worried. I am worried. But what does red remind us of? Something we love about Jesus. And something that I love about Jesus is that he always loves me. And he always loves you too. So instead of be focusing on being really worried, we can adjust our attitude and say, thank you, Jesus, that you love me. <gasps> right. I'm feeling sad that I can't meet my friends. At the moment, it's really tricky to meet our friends like we normally would, isn't it? unless we're at school, because of the lockdown, I'm feeling sad that I can't meet my friends. But what does black remind us of? Something we can see. And it might not be our friends, but let's have a look. Thank you, God, for creation. Thank you, God, for the wonderful world you made, that we can go out and have walks in the leaves that have fallen on the floor and the beautiful sunshine, and we can ride our bikes and scooters. Thank you, God, for creation. And the last one, I'm not too good at this. Or you might be at school and you might be trying hard, maybe practising writing your name or your phonics. And you think, oh, I'm not very good at this. What does green remind us of this month? Something we have learnt. And do you know what? This one's true for me too. I am still learning. Even when I find things tricky, I can remind myself it's okay because I'm still learning. I'm still learning every day. So thank you, God, that my parents can help me. Thank you, God, for everything I have. Thank you, God, that Jesus loves me. Thank you for creation. And thank you that I'm still learning.
Wow, what an amazing prayer. And I already feel better about all of those things. But when we're thankful and we adjust our attitude, it makes us feel so much better. So can you try this week to remember all of our colours? And when you're in a sticky situation and you're, you're worrying or you're finding things hard, have a think about what you can thank God for in that moment. It's really tricky, but I promise you it will make you feel so much better. I will see you next week for our last week in the series and we're going to tell you some very funny things about the staff team at Andover Baptist Church. So stay tuned next week for that. But before we go, I'm going to ask God to help us to be thankful. Father God, I thank you that you love us. And even when things are really hard, there's always something to thank you for because you are so good to us. I pray this week you help us to have thankful hearts and adjust our attitude. In Jesus' name, amen. Fantastic. Have a lovely week and I'll see you next week.